Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in for today's webinar presentation. Today, we're taking a look at rate management inside RoomKey and as it affects our connectivity partners through our GDS distribution channels. So getting started here, take a look at an outline for today's presentation. We'll start with some introductions. Then we'll jump right into how to update rates, how to updating or updating rates when they're connected to a GDS connectivity partner. We'll talk about rate management interfaces that connect with RoomKey. And we'll also look at managing rate restrictions. Then we have a few uh, frequently asked questions or FAQ uh, related to rates and rate management with RoomKey. Then we'll summarize our presentation with a summary and Q&A at the end. So for our introductions today, my name is Tasha LeClaire. I'm a trainer and implementation specialist with RoomKey. Joining me today, I do have our Director of Customer Experience, Mr. William Tam. I'll be leading today's presentation and the demonstrations on screen, and William will oversee the chat and Q&A inside the Zoom webinar meeting. Everyone participating in today's presentation is muted by default, but if you do have any questions as we go through our presentation, go ahead and click on the Q&A button in the meeting and you can ask a question. William will be able to type out an answer and any questions that are remaining towards the end can be included in our Q&A and summary. A couple more things about today's webinar. It is being recorded. A copy of that recording will be made available on our support website. Everyone who has registered for the webinar will receive a notification within 24 hours when that webinar is added to our support website. Lastly, for those, those of you that are attending our live presentation today, there is a webinar survey at the end of our presentation. Couple of quick questions, just asking about your experience today. And if you'd like to suggest any topics for future presentations, we really appreciate that feedback. So let's go ahead and get started. So starting with our topic today, we'll start with how to update rates. And we actually have a couple of options in RoomKey for how to update rates. Now, this will not be uh, demonstrating how to create a brand new rate. We do have a webinar presentation that uh, is included on our support website that shows you how to create a brand new rate and upload rates and attach client types and things like that in RoomKey. But this, uh, these options are going to show you how to change rate pricing. Our recommended option here is to change the base rate. And I have a quick video here that's going to demonstrate how to do that inside RoomKey. So in the rate wizard in RoomKey, you'll select the rate and then you'll click the next button in the bottom right corner. Here in the bottom of the screen, you can see what the rates are currently set as, and I want to increase that using the base rate. So I'm going to enter the new base rate, which is going to be 355 into the base rate row. Then I select the date range that I want to apply this new rate change. So it's going to be for the beginning of July. I'll select update rate amounts, and then I'll click the save button. When I do so, I will say yes to changing the rates and a applying that change to any tiered rates. Once that has been applied, I can now check my work in the lower half of the screen. I can see that the rate has changed. The base rate has changed to 355. And I can also check that the rate has uploaded or uh, changed as well for any subsequent room types. So using the rate wizard, we only need to change the base rate in order to change the rate pricing for all room types. And you can always check your work using the rate calendar in the lower half of that screen. Now we do have a second option. If you do not want to use the base rate method, you can use the second option to change each rate in the grid. So this video is going to show that second option here. Again, we'll select uh, we'll use the rate wizard to select the rate plan and then click the next button in the bottom right corner. In this example, instead of changing the base rate, I'm going to unlock the grid. And for each room type, for each 
occupancy, I'm going to change the price manually. So this example, I'm typing in the price, or sorry, the new rate per occupancy for each room type. Once I finish that, I can now enter the date, the date range, the date from and date to. In this case, I'm going to add this price through the end of the year. Do not click the update rate template button. You will select the update rate amounts checkbox and click the save button. You'll confirm that you want to update those rates. And once confirmed, you can now check your work in the lower half of the screen. Now, this is showing me my uh, EKS room type. I just wanted to show you here that it does upload through the entire date range. So if I go into December, I can see my rates are loaded through to the end of December, um, but not into 2025. You can check each room type price that you've uploaded. So here I'm checking my SQQ and my DQQ room types per distribution channel. So in RoomKey, we do allow you the flexibility of either using our recommended option number one, changing the base rate, or you can use option number two and just change each rate in the grid. Now that we've seen how we can upload rates, a common question that we do get is how do you change the price of one room type? So we actually have a short video here that will show you how to do that, how you can change the price of just one room type instead of changing the pricing on all of your room types. And we're going to use a variation of that option two method. We're actually going to use the grid and we're just gonna change one rate on the grid. So this video is gonna take you through and show you how to do that. Once again, starting from the rate wizard, you'll select your rate plan and click the next button in the bottom right hand corner. Now this dividing line, you can use this to click and drag this down so you can view information in the grid in a more accessible manner. Now I wanna change the PH Villa room type. I need to unlock the grid and remove the check marks from each of the other room types except the PH Villa room type. Now with the PH Villa selected, I can enter the new rate per occupancy for this one room type. I'll enter the date from and date to date range for this price change. This is going to be applied um, from June through to the end of August. Again, you do not select update rate template. You go directly to the update rate amounts checkbox and click the save button. I'll go ahead and select OK. And if the rate is, has tiered rates, you can select yes. Now that I've made changes, you can click and drag that dividing line back up and you can check your work in the lower uh, in the grid down below. So here I can see the pH villa, the price has changed. And if I check my SQQ room type, you'll see that though that room type is not affected. If I go back and check my pH villa once again and go through to the end of August here. There we go. Uh, you can see that the price has changed through to the end of August, that date range that I entered, but it does not change for September. So couple of different methods that you can use in room key for updating your rates or just the rate price for a single room type. Now, as we've been looking at this, uh, these methods of updating rates, one thing that I've been referring to is the grid um, or it may, uh, the technical term for it that we use is rate template. And that is specifically this section in the rate wizard when you're managing a rate pricing using the next button. 
So this grid, every time you open, every time you click next and open up this window, this grid is always locked by default. And you can see that there's a little check mark here in the lower right hand corner that says lock the grid. That check mark is always selected. And that ensures that you do not accidentally change any of these values inside the rate template or grid. Now, there may be some scenarios where you do want to change these values. And I have a short video here that will show you how to do that. So to change the rate template, this is the only time that you will select that update rate template button. If you recall the last two videos that I showed, uh, the button did appear when we unlocked the grid, but I told you do not select it. This is the only time that you would select that update rate template button. Uh, so let's take a look at how you would change the rate template. So you would unlock the grid. You would change the prices in that rate template. In this case, I'm going to change the SK room type to match the SQQ room type. And I'm going to increase the uh, increment for the DQQ room type. I'm also going to increase the increment for the EKS or Executive King Suite room type for this database as well. Once I make my changes, I can now click the Update Rate Template button. Those will save those changes and for security purposes, I'm also going to recheck the lock the grid checkbox. So once you've made changes to the grid, I can now follow any of my options, uh, usually my option number one to make rate changes moving forward. So those are the different options that we have for uplead, for managing your rates and updating your rate prices inside RoomKey. Now let's take a look at how to update rates when you are managing rates connected to a GDS distribution channel. Now this will be a little bit of a recap from last month's webinar where we talked about third party rate mapping and our connectivity partners. So a quick recap about our connectivity partners that we work with with RoomKey PMS. We have Direct Connect with Booking.com, Expedia, and TripAdvisor. We also work with GDS and channel managers like SiteMinder, Travel Tripper, uh, Windsurfer, TravelClick, iHotelier, Synexus, and Vertical Booking. So these are all the partnerships that we work with. And the way that we work with these different connectivity partners is through an interface where rates and inventory information are sent from RoomKey up to our connectivity partner. And when a reservation, when a guest makes a reservation on one of those platforms, that reservation detail uh, automatically flows back down into RoomKey. So in order for these interfaces to work with these connectivity partners, these rate plans are mapped at a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that each rate plan you create on the connectivity partner platform needs a corresponding rate plan in RoomKey PMS, and we map those on a one-to-one -one ratio. If you'd like more information about that mapping process, definitely check out last month's webinar. It's called Three Third Party Rate Mapping. When it comes to updating rates, we want to talk about a couple of terms, and the first one here is uploaded rates. Some features of an uploaded rate means that the rate plan is created as an independent rate plan on the connectivity platform. The corresponding rate plan that you create in RoomKey PMS is not tier enabled. So this screenshot from the rate wizard in RoomKey, the best available rate is a good example of an uploaded rate. It is distributed to the GDS distribution channel. So I've got a check mark in that column for the best available rate, but it is not tier enabled. So there is no check mark in the tier enabled column in the rate wizard. Now, these rates are managed in RoomKey and then uploaded to the connectivity partner platform, meaning uh, you're making your rate changes, just as we saw earlier in today's presentation. Any of those pricing changes that are made in RoomKey are then uploaded to the connectivity partner platform. 
Now, another term that you're going to encounter with uh, GDS rates is the term derived rates. Now, these rates are created as a dependent rate plan on the connectivity platform. And the corresponding rate plan created in RoomKey is typically tier enabled. So an example of one of these uh, is the AAA or AARP rates that I have in this screenshot here. You can see that they are both um, distributed to the GDS distribution channel. Um, and they also have this tier enabled checkbox marked in uh, the rate wizard. Now, these rates are actually managed on the connectivity partner platform directly. So when you are creating the dependent rate plan on the connectivity partner platform, you are also setting up how it is uh, derived from another rate. So it might be a 10% discount or it might be a $10 off of another rate like best available or rack and that's how you're setting it up and you're managing that the dependency on the connectivity partner platform itself rates are not being pushed from room key up to the connectivity partner in this example in these types of scenarios if you are managing your rate mapping inside RoomKey, you may be familiar with this screen it is the gds linking screen and you may already be familiar with derived versus uploaded rates because we actually do have this terminology built into the GDS linking platform. It's using this checkbox, the very end of the column. Um, rates that are uploaded to the connectivity partner have a checkbox, have a check mark in the uploaded rates checkbox on the far right hand side. But if they are derived, meaning that they are controlled on the connectivity partner platform, uh, they will not have a check mark. And we actually also highlight those in green just to make sure that those are nice and visible when you are um, mapping rates using the GDS linking tool in RoomKey. And again, if you'd like some more information about that mapping process or using this GDS linking tool in RoomKey, definitely check out our third party rate mapping webinar from last month. Now we do also have uh, connections with revenue management interfaces or sometimes called an RMS platform. We work with two platforms, Duetto and Ideas, to manage revenue. Now in much the same way that we connect uh, with our connectivity partners on a one-to-one -one ratio where rates are uh, connected one-to-one -one with the rate plans created on that connectivity partner platform. We do the same method with our RMS connections or RMS interfaces here with Duetto and Ideas. So what that means is that each rate plan you create in RoomKey also needs a corresponding rate plan to be connect created on the RMS platform. Now, instead of rates being uploaded from room key to the platform in this scenario you are actually using the rms platform to manage your rates exclusively so instead of controlling your rates in room key you're actually managing your rates on the rms platform and those rate changes or price changes are being pushed down into room key so because you're using the RMS platform to change your rates, uh, you would actually refer to their support information on how to make changes to a rate price or a single room type price, things like that. Uh, those changes are not controlled in room key when you're working with an RMS tool like Duetto or Ideas. The next thing that we're going to look at, we've been talking about rate plans and rate prices so far. Let's also talk about rate restrictions. Now, rate restrictions inside RoomKey, I'm going to show you a demonstration of how to apply a rate restriction. The example that I'm going to use is how to close a rate. So we're restricting the rate by closing it and preventing uh, that rate from being booked. I'm going to open up room key on screen and to close a rate, I'm going to close the best available rate for this Saturday. I'll go to system configuration and open up the rate wizard. I will select 
the best available rate plan. I have that here at the top and I'll click the next button. Once that opens up, uh, this is the screen that we've seen so far. I do not need to do anything with the grid or the prices at the top. I can go directly to my date range, date from and date to, and select the dates that I want to close this rate. I'm just going to close it for Saturday, June 22nd in this example. So I'll select 22nd as the date from and the date to. And I'm not going to be updating any rate amounts. Instead, I'm going to be using the restriction boxes down below. In this example, I want to close that rate. So I'll select the close restriction and I'll click save. Room key confirms that I'm going to be closing this best available rate. And it will also ask me if I want to also close any of those tiered rates. We always recommend you select yes. So once a rate is closed, any changes that I make, I can review those changes on the rate calendar down below. Let me just scroll down here. So for Saturday, June 22nd, I can see that this uh, date is now highlighted in yellow. And if I just scroll back up here, um, that lets me know that this is a closed rate. If you are applying another type of restriction, or if you want to know more information about this restriction, you can double click on that date and that will tell you um, if there is a minimum or maximum length of stay restriction or if it's close to arrival. Now, I've applied that close restriction. I can remove that restriction in much the same way. So if I wanted to reopen that rate, for the 22nd, uh, this Saturday, if I want to open up the best available rate again, I would follow the same method where I'd use the date from and date to to select my date, uh, June 22nd. And instead of selecting the close option, I'm now going to select open closed rate. I'll go ahead and click save. I'll confirm that I want to uh, update the closed restriction. I want to reopen that. And I always recommend that you apply that to your tiered rates as well. So I'll select yes. Great. So now that has now up changed the background color. Uh, it is no longer closed. It has reopened the rate for Saturday the 22nd. So you can manage rates, uh, rate restrictions inside RoomKey in much the same way that we are managing the rate pricing. You can actually do it at the same time. So you can change the price and apply a restriction at the same time as well. Now, when it comes to managing rate restrictions with your GDS connected rate, these types of restrictions and how they flow back and forth between the connectivity partner is dependent upon the connectivity partner itself, so the type of interface you're working with, and it also depends on the type of restriction that you're applying. So let's bring up those connectivity partners once again. I have them listed on the left-hand side here. And I want to take a moment to talk about the different types of restrictions. The first one we looked at in that demonstration was how to close a rate. That means that the rate cannot be booked on a specific date. So when I close the best available rate for this Saturday, it means that a guest cannot stay for the night on Saturday. They could stay for the night on Friday or Sunday, but they cannot stay on Saturday night. The rate is closed at the best available rate price. Another type of restriction that we can manage in RoomKey and alongside these connectivity partners is the ability to close to arrival. Now, this will close that rate, but only for arrivals, meaning the guests cannot arrive on that specific date. If I close to a, if I had a close to arrival restriction to this Saturday, means that the guests cannot arrive on Saturday and check out Sunday, but they could arrive on Friday, stay through Saturday and check out on Sunday. So that's the difference between the close rate and close to arrival restrictions there. 
Now we have one more type of restriction that we work with. That's the length of stay or LOS. In these restrictions, it uh, means that the guests must stay a minimum or maximum number of nights in order to book the rate on that date. So for example, if I applied a two night minimum stay on Saturday, it means that if the guest was booking that, res making a reservation arriving on Saturday, they need to book at least two consecutive nights, Friday night, or sorry, uh, Saturday night and Sunday night in order to book the best available rate for those dates. If they were to book a one night stay arriving on Saturday, they would not be able to book that rate because it has a minimum length of stay of two nights. Uh, so given this information and because each of our connectivity partners will manage or interact or support these types of restrictions in different methods, I'm going to look at each of our connectivity partners one at a time. Let's start with the booking.com direct connect. Now, just a quick reminder, this is the direct connect with booking.com. Um, it is, if you are using a channel manager or GDS platform to manage booking.com rates like Synexis, uh, or if you manage booking.com rates through uh, SiteMinder, we'll look at those later. This is only if you are using the direct connect with booking.com. And in this scenario, uh, once again, you're building those rates uh, on your connectivity partner on the booking.com platform. When you're building those rates, if you mark them as read only, they, it means that the rate and the restriction are managed on the platform itself. Otherwise, rates and restrictions are uploaded from room key PMS um, except those read only uh, marked rates on the platform. Now, in this scenario, all three of these types of restrictions are controlled in room key. So if you close a rate in room key, it's going to upload that restriction to the booking.com platform through the direct connect. Speaking of direct connects, let's also take a look at our Expedia direct connect. Now, uh, again, this is the Expedia direct connect. It is not Expedia rates managed through SiteMinder or another um, channel manager. So when you're building your Expedia rates on the Expedia platform, uh, if you mark any of those as non-manageable or linked, they are not managed in room key, they are actually managed on the platform directly. But for all other scenarios, rates and restrictions are uploaded from room key, and that applies to all restrictions except the close to arrival. In this scenario, uh, Expedia does not support the close to arrival restriction. They only support the uh, close rate and length of stay restrictions. The next connectivity partner we'll look at is SiteMinder. For SiteMinder, rates and restrictions are uploaded from room key, except when the rate is created as a derived or linked rate on the connectivity partner platform, on the SiteMinder platform. So if you create the rate as derived or linked on SiteMinder, rates and restrictions are not uploaded from room key. You're actually managing those rates and restrictions on the SiteMinder platform itself. Otherwise, if it is created as an independent or not derived on the SiteMinder platform, all three types of restrictions uh, when applied in room key are uploaded to the SiteMinder uh, platform and then uh, applied to any types of bookings that are uh, booked through SiteMinder. Next connectivity partner we'll look at is Travel Tripper. In this case, all rates and restrictions are uploaded from room key. And when it comes to these three types of restrictions, uh, close rate and close to arrival are supported, but Travel Tripper does not support our length of stay restrictions. Only the uh, close rate and close to arrival restrictions when you're applying those in room key, those are the ones that are being uploaded to uh, Travel Tripper. 
The next connectivity partner we're looking at is Windsurfer. For this one, when you are applying your rates and restrictions in RoomKey, those are being uploaded, except if you create the rate as derived or linked on the Windsurfer platform. And for all three of these restrictions, these can be controlled in RoomKey and then uploaded for those non-derived or non-linked rates in Windsurfer. The next one that we're looking at is vertical booking. Uh, vertical booking allows us to upload rates and restrictions from RoomKey unless you have marked a rate plan as derived or linked on the vertical booking platform. Now for these restrictions, uh, it does accept all restrictions. However, when you are applying a minimum length of stay, you can control that in room key. However, vertical booking does not accept any maximum length of stay restrictions. So if you were to apply uh, a maximum length of stay restriction in room key, that type of restriction is not supported by the vertical booking platform. They only support the minimum length of stay. Now let's take a look at Synexis. Now with our Synexis connections, we actually offer two variations. We have a basic two-way connection with Synexis and we have an enhanced two-way connection. So we're going to look at this basic connection first. In both, both scenarios, uh, you do have the option to create your rate plans on the Synexis platform as derived or child rates. If you create them as a derived or child rate, it means that you're managing the rate and restrictions on the Synexis platform itself. Those rates and restrictions are not uploaded from RoomKey. But for any rate plans that are uploaded from RoomKey, um, the restrictions are all controlled in RoomKey as well. That is for the basic two-way setup. Now, if you have upgraded your Synexis membership to an enhanced Synexis platform, we do also connect with the enhanced two-way connection with Synexis. And again, we do not support any rate plans that are uh, derived or marked as child rate plans. Those are still controlled on the Synexis enhanced platform. If you are applying any rate restrictions, those are controlled inside RoomKey for the close rate and close to arrival, and also the length of stay, but Synexis Enhanced does not support a minimum maximum stay through. When it comes to stay through, um, if it was a stay through program, if the guest, if it was um, the guest was arriving on Friday and Saturday had a three night minimum stay, if the guest wanted to stay through Saturday and check out Sunday, the stay through restriction would force them to actually stay three nights and check out on Monday instead. And that is actually not supported by RoomKey or the Synexis Enhanced platform. So just a little bit of a description there because there is a little confusion sometimes with the length of stay applied on the arrival date versus a stay through. One other thing that I would like to note with the Synexis Enhanced platform and inter two-way interface with RoomKey is that if you are working with any of our RMS partnerships like Duetto or Ideas and you apply a hurdle rate restriction through Duetto or Ideas, we do allow those restrictions to flow through RoomKey and apply to the Synexis two-way enhanced platform. In RoomKey, we do not manage hurdle rate restrictions, but the Duetto and Ideas platform, RMS platforms, do allow those types of restrictions. And our connection with Synexis Enhance allows us to pass along that restriction from Duetto or Ideas onto Synexis Enhance itself, although that is not controlled at all whatsoever inside RoomKey. The next and final platform that we're looking at is the TravelClick iHotelier connectivity partner. And with this connectivity partner, we do have a basic and an advanced uh, variations as well. So let's take a look at the basic variation first. In this case, rates and restrictions are uploaded from RoomKey, except when they are marked as derived or linked 
on the TravelClick iHotelier platform. Now, for these types of rates, all the close, close to arrival and length of stay restrictions controlled in RoomKey and are uploaded to the TravelClick or iHotelier basic two-way interface. Now, if you've upgraded your membership with TravelClick iHotelier to the advanced variation, we do also connect with this advanced variation in much the same way. So again, if you are building those rates as derived or linked, you're managing them on the TravelClick iHotelier platform, not in RoomKey. But for rates that are uploaded from RoomKey, we kind of adhere to all three of those restrictions. So you would control the restriction, the close rate or close to arrival are controlled in room key. And with the length of stay, we do control the length of stay restriction by arrival date in room key, but the minimum maximum length of stay restriction uh, applied as a stay through is not supported by room key and is not supported by the travel click I hotel your advanced two way connection there. So I know that it uh, is quite a lot of detail there, but hopefully um, this helps break it down a, a little more easily for those of you that have these different connectivity partners and work with um, different types of restrictions, uh, either uploaded or derived or linked through RoomKey. Now we've come to look at uh, some frequently asked questions when it comes to room key and, and managing rates, of course. One question that we do get is, uh, what are the rate reports and what can they tell me? So, so far in room key, let me just pull up our test database here. When you're looking at the rate wizard and you click the next button, sometimes we get questions about the rate reports button that appears over to the right hand side. Now, when you click print rate reports, you'll have a little pop up here that gives you options to print different types of rate reports. Another way that you may encounter this rate reports pop up is from the reports menu directly. So if you're not seeing, um, so instead of viewing that pop up from the rate plan itself or here in the rate wizard, if you go to the reports menu, we also have the rate reports accessible from this reports drop down menu in room key. Now, these rate reports are different variations that let you know how your rate plans are built. And if you are connected with any GDS connectivity partners, you may also see this GDS rate linkings uh, report as well. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Um, one of the first ones that I do like to recommend is if you're working with any tiered rates, you want to take a look at your rate template tiering report. When I click print, this is going to give me a preview of this report. And this report will tell you what, how your rates are tiering and what they are dependent upon. So in this example, um, the best available rate is tier level one. It is a master rate. As we saw earlier, it is built as uh, an independent rate. It is not tiered, but we do have different rates that are tiered off of it. And these are all listed alphabetically below. For each one of these tiered rates, you'll see that it's a higher tier level, so tier level two, and it will also tell you how uh, it is calculated. So in this example of the AAA rate, it is tiered off of the best available rate at a percentage of 10 less, meaning that it is 10% less than the best available rate. It will also let you know if those rates are uh, adhering to any uh, restrictions as well. So is it tiered, uh, is the close close to arrival also tiered off of the best available rate? In this case, yes, yes, and yes for all uh, of the rate restrictions. Uh, so depending on how many rates you have set up as tiered, uh, that will dictate the size of this report. You can see that this report is actually across three different pages letting me know how my rates tiering setup is built inside the rate wizard. 
So that was the rate template tiering report. Now, another type of report that you may want to take a look at if you're using any uh, the base rate method to update your rate amounts, you can take a look at the rate template without having to actually open up the rate itself. So if you click rate templates, and in this example, I'm just going to use the best available rate, the one that we've been working with so far in the uh, demonstrations. Or you can actually show the rate templates for all rates or multiple rates, depending on which ones you're selecting here. I'm just going to look at the best available rate first and click print. In this example, this is going to uh, show me what my rate what the rate grid is set up as or the rate template. So here I can see the rate template uh, grid information is displayed on screen. Another helpful thing that I can see uh, regarding this rate plan, uh, specifically the best available rate, is that this will let me know if there, how the rate is distributed. So I can see it's distributed through the Hotel Direct, online and GDS channels. I can also see what client types are attached or associated with this rate um, based off of those different distribution channels. And I can also see if there's any corporate um, accounts associated with this rate plan. So quite a lot of information can be gleaned uh, from this rate template tier, or sorry, rate template report. Now, when you're working with any GDS rates um, and you want to see which rates are linked and how they're linked, uh, you can access the GDS rate linkings report. This one is actually going to show you by um, connectivity partner. So let me just zoom in a little bit further here. I can see that these are the rates that are connected to my SiteMinder platform, and it will also report per room type. So for my DK room type, the GDS rate that I have connected is my best available rate. I have a package uh, GDS rate, and I have some Expedia rates as well. So depending on how many rate plans you're managing on this connectivity partner platform, those will be listed per room type on this report. Uh, this, this is just a demo database, so I just have a short um, two-page report here, but this report could get quite long depending on how many rates and how many room types you have uh, linked and distributed to the GDS. Uh, the last one is my rate plan audit. This report does give you the option to export directly to CSV. When you click this report, this one is going to show you uh, all of the rate plans that are built inside the rate wizard, and it's going to show each rate plan. So here's the best available rate. It's going to show you your rate template code. The code is associated with the rate plan. It will also show you uh, how that rate is distributed, how that rate is distributed per room type. So you may have some room types that are only available hotel direct and not available on uh, through the hotel website or GDS. Um, this report will give that level of detail if needed. Now, this report can be quite long, especially if you have many uh, types of rates built in the rate wizard. This example here in the demo database, you can see it's almost 50 pages long but it does give quite a bit of detail. Um, this report, you may not use it as often um, because it is so large, uh, but it can be helpful reference if you are um, doing an audit, uh, a yearly audit or some sort of uh, semi-annual audit of all of your rate plans. So again, uh, all of these rate reports can be found from the reports menu using the rate reports option, or they can be found in the rate wizard itself. Okay. Uh, now, another frequently asked question that we do get is, um, how do I update one tiered rate 
but not all. So um, kind of going back to the beginning of our presentation today, when we are updating the rate pricing, um, let me go ahead and open up the rate wizard here from system configuration. When you are updating a rate that has rates that are tiered off of it, so this best available rate is not tier enabled, but from the rate reports we just looked at, I know that it does have uh, AAA and AARP rates that are tiered off of it. If I want to make a change to the price of my best available rate, and I only want to make that change apply to my AAA and AARP rates, but I do not want to apply that change to any of the other tiered rates. You can do that when you are uploading your rate prices. So let me show you how to do that. From the best available rate, you'll click Next. And my price for the best available rate today is 310. I can see that in my rate calendar down below. And if I want to increase that price uh, to, let's say 350, I can change that price using my base rate row at the top here. This is option one, the first or recommended option. <clears throat> if you're using option number two, you do not use the base rate, you would use the grid method. But here I'm going to use the option one using the base rate. So I put in my new base rate, which is 350. I select my date from and date two, that's going to apply for today's date, June 19. I'll select update rate amounts and click the save button. I'm going to confirm that I want to change the rate amount. But when it comes to my rates that are tiered off of best available, instead of selecting yes by default, I'm going to click no. And this will now show me all the rates that are tiered off of the best available rate. And it'll allow me to select specific rates that I want to change. So in this example, I only want to change the rate pricing for my AAA and AARP rates. I don't want to change the pricing for any of the other tiered rates. Click select, update selected rates. And that will now change my pricing. So here on the rate grid for today's date, I can see the price has now changed to 350, the base rate. If I return to main page and take a look at my AAA rate, click next. I can see that the price is now uh, 315. It, would have been 279, but because I changed the price, it is now 315. If I return to the main page, I know that I have, um, for example, my booking.com is also um, tiered off of my best available rate. When I click next, I can see that today's date, it still shows as 310. So it did not apply the rate change to this tiered rate. It only applied the rate change to the rate plans that I selected as part of uh, updating the rate price on the best available rate. Oops. So um, when you are updating your rates um, and they have rates that are tiered off of them, we always recommend you select yes, but if you have a specific reason not to, you can choose to only update for one or select uh, tiered rates and not all of them. Now, another common question we get is how do I apply a rate restriction for one room type, but not all of them? And this is also going to be um, shown using uh, the rate grid. So a little bit of option two that we saw, or sorry, uh, the ability to uh, lock and unlock the grid when you're applying the rate restrictions. Back here to my example, um, for the best available rate, if I wanted to close just 
one room type, but allow the best available rate to remain open for all other room types. You can do that from the rate wizard. So I'll select best available rate. I'll click next. And I'm going to close this rate plan for Saturday, but I only want to apply the closure for my pH room types. So right now, if I take a look at the rate grid down below and take a look at my pH villa, you'll see that uh, this Saturday, the 22nd, is open. It's at a price of $1,200. But if I wanted to close this room type, or apply a restriction to this room type for the 22nd. Um, for only this one room type, I do need to remove the or unlock the grid. Now, just to make things easier, I'm going to use that trick where I can click and drag this dividing line. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to unlock the grid and I'm going to remove the check marks from all other room types and only change or only apply the restriction to my pH villa. Now I can select the date from and date to. This is going to apply to this Saturday, June 22nd. And I do not select update rate template. I do not select update rate amounts. I go directly to the restriction, which in this case is to close that room type on that date. Select save. Room key confirms that I am closing that room type for this rate on that date. And we'll also apply that to all tiered rates as well as a best practice. Now that I've made that change, I can click and drag this dividing line back up. And for my pH villa room type, I'll see that on uh, June 22nd, that rate is now closed. So it appears in yellow. If I was to look at another room type, like my base rate, my SQQ room type, you'll see that that room type remains open on Saturday. So the restriction is only applied to one room type in this example. Uh, to reopen that room type, I would follow the same method up above. Make sure that the pH villa is the only selected room type in the rate grid. I would use my date from and date to to select the date or date range. And I'd go directly to the restriction. In this case, I would open the closed rate and click save. You'd click OK and yes when prompted for any tiered rates. When I click and drag this dividing line back up, I can now confirm uh, on my rate calendar here with my pH villa room type. I can now see that that date, June 22nd, is now open. It is no longer restricted with a close restriction. Okay, uh, so that actually brings us uh, to the end of our frequently asked questions with regards to managing rates. Um, let's take a look at a bit of a summary and Q&A. So far, we've looked at a lot of different information about rate management. We've seen how to update rates, update those rates with GDS rates and how they interact with revenue management interfaces or RMS like Duetto and Ideas. We did take a deep dive into how to manage rate restrictions in room key and with the connectivity partners. Then we took a look at a couple of FAQ there. So I'm just going to open up the floor to see if there's any outstanding questions regarding rate management. Just taking a look here. Um, no. Uh, doesn't look like there's any outstanding questions. I'm going to leave the floor open for a little bit longer here, just in case you'd like to type out any questions into the Q&A button on the Zoom webinar. Okay. Um, 
so we are at the end of our time here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our webinar. Thank you so much to everyone for joining in for today's presentation. I hope this was very informative for you, and we hope to see you at the next one. Have a great day.